Welcome to the Render Pro Setup Guide. This video will walk you through how to make the machine ready for first use and submit jobs for network rendering. Topics covered will include the following. Attaching Render Pro to your network. Working with BoxView and Render Pro Remote Management. Installing software on Render Pro. Setting up shared network folders. Working with Autodesk Backburner. And finally, submitting jobs to network rendering. Let's go ahead and get started with the first step. Connect your corporate LAN network cable to the first open port on your network switch. Your office network needs to have an active DHCP server in order for Render Pro to obtain an IP address. Now connect Render Pro's IPMI port to an open port on your network switch. Next, connect Render Pro's Ethernet port to an open port on your switch. Now connect the AC power cord to your Render Pro and turn it on. Now make sure that your main workstation is plugged in and powered on. Then connect the workstation's Ethernet port to an open port on the network switch. In most cases, Render Pro is meant to be accessed remotely from another workstation. To do this, we need to know the IP address it was assigned. On your main workstation, locate the thumb drive that came with your new Render Pro and install the BoxView software. Next, open Box View on your main workstation. Click the magnifying glass icon to initiate the IPMI device search process. Click on the Detect button, select your workstation's IP address from the drop-down list, and click OK. The search will return a list of devices on your network which are IPMI 2.0 enabled. The IP address discovered in this search is likely your Render Pro. Make a note of the IP address for the following step. You have the option to control and manage your Render Pro device through the BoxView application or through a web browser. Since we're only dealing with a single Render Pro in this example, we'll go ahead and use the web browser to manage the device. On your main workstation, open a web browser and in the address bar, type in the IP address that was discovered with BoxView. Use the term ADMIN in all caps for both the username and password. You will then be presented with an interface and options to control the Render Pro remotely. Hover over the Remote Control tab and select Console Redirection, then click the Launch Console button. A Java-based window will open with a view into the Windows environment on your Render Pro. If you have already booted into Windows, enter your login credentials to access the Windows desktop. If this is the first time you've powered on Render Pro and booted into Windows, you will need to complete the following steps before you gain access to the Windows desktop. Create a username for your account and type in a name for your Render Pro. If you have multiple Render Pros, numbering them is a good idea. Set a password for your user account along with an optional password hint. Activate Windows by entering the product key located on the underside of the Render Pro chassis. Select an option for installing Windows updates. Most users choose recommended settings. Now configure your current date and time settings. Finally, you'll need to specify the current location of your Render Pro. For most users, this will be a work network. Now it's time to load software applications onto the Render Pro. In this example, we'll load 3D Studio Max. Your Render Pro does not have an optical drive, so you'll need to load the installation files from a network location or a shared folder on your main workstation. To access a shared folder, open a Windows File Explorer and type in the following file path. You may be prompted to enter login credentials to access the folder. Locate the 3D Studio Max installation files and begin the installation process. You can install the software as a 30-day trial, since render nodes do not require a full license. This is true with 3D Studio Max and Mental Ray rendering. Other production applications and rendering plugins may require separate licensing. When installation completes, click on the Start button and open the Autodesk folder. Verify that Autodesk 3D Studio Max and Autodesk Backburner have been added to the programs list. Next, you need to create a shared folder on your network or main workstation. This folder will store your 3ds Max scene files and corresponding assets like texture maps. 
Now you'll want to minimize the RenderPro remote access window so that you're working on your main workstation's desktop. On your main workstation or network file server, create a folder called Projects. Copy all of your 3ds Max scene files and assets into this folder. The final folder structure is up to you. Next, we need to enable network file and folder sharing for this particular folder. Go up one level and access the properties of the projects folder. Click on the sharing tab, then click the share button. Click the drop down to access the types of users who can access this folder. Choose everyone and then click add. Set the permission level to read and write access, then click the share button to enable these properties. The projects folder is now shared. Make a note of the file path for the following step. If you wish, you can map a network drive to the shared project folder from your main workstation as well as the Render Pro. In the file explorer, click on computer, then click map network drive. Select a drive letter from the drop down list. We'll use the same drive letter on the Render Pro. Now type in the network path of the projects folder and click the finish button. Maximize the Java window which contains the Render Pro's desktop and perform the same steps for mapping the network drive. You may be prompted to enter your login credentials to access the shared folder. Now it's time to prepare both of the machines for network rendering. Back on the workstation, click the start button, open the Autodesk folder, and launch the Backburner Manager application. Launching the manager for the first time brings up the General Properties window. Click OK to accept the default settings. Maximize the Render Pro desktop window. Click the Start button, open the Autodesk folder, and this time open the Backburner server application. Launching the server for the first time will bring up the Server General Properties box. Click OK to accept the default settings. You should see a message in the log window indicating that the server has successfully registered with the manager. Your Render Pro is now ready to receive jobs for network rendering. Back on the workstation, launch 3ds Max and open a scene file in the Shared Projects folder. File paths to scene assets like textures and bitmaps may need to be adjusted in order for Render Pro to find them on the network and render correctly. To update all of the asset file paths at once, open Asset Tracking. Select all of the assets in your scene, then choose Paths from the top menu. Then select Strip Path. You also may need to update the Render Output folder to a location within the Shared Projects folder. We're now ready to submit the job to Network Rendering and take advantage of the Render Pro. In the Render dialog box, click the drop-down arrow next to the Render button. Click Submit to Network Rendering and the Network Job Assignment window will appear. Click on the Connect button, then choose the Render Pro from the Servers list. To submit the job, click on the Submit button at the bottom of the window. It will take a moment for the scene assets to be transferred to the Render Pro. Open the Render Pro desktop window. You should see messages in the log window indicating that the job has been received. Render Pro is now doing all of the heavy lifting and taking on the rendering tasks. This, of course, will free up CPU cycles on your main workstation, thus allowing you to continue working.